Hey, good morning guys. Aaron at Matt Kite here with Tucker this morning. And I had a question for Tucker about, you know, as he was shooting one of his videos, I was like, hey, you know, with, with kites, we know, um, for those of us who kite and wing, um, on a kite, I know that, you know, when I'm doing a review, I'm looking at, you know, a lot of things. Uh, I'm looking at power, up wind ability, uh, relaunch. There, there's a certain set of things that I know about, about kiting that I wanna, uh, you know, when we're looking at a kite review. And I was asking Tucker, how does that translate to wing? <laughs> You know, because obviously you don't have relaunch. That's yeah. not a factor. I'm sure. Well, it, sort it, of. I mean, yeah, you have to control <laughs> yeah. the wing in the water and, well, and I get said, it into I your said, hands uh, and into the air. So that's, uh, at some point that is kind of relaunch, but yeah, not as critical Yeah. when it's right there up by and you can kind of manhandle it. So what are some of the things, like if, if we were talking about that for kiting, which we, we generically know how to do that, how does how do you translate that to wing? What, what are the elements that you're, that you're looking at? Yeah, so a lot of it's kind of the same. We're talking mm -hmm. about uh, a sail. We're talking about a foil shape. Um, so, you know, you're talking about lift, you're talking yeah. about forward drive, you're talking about creation of, of parent wind. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of that's all the same in terms of concepts. It, it, it breaks down a little different in winging because there's different needs, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, right. Obviously, there's different riding styles and, and some things like, you know, maybe turning speed are negated sure. because it's right here. It's not a, yeah, yeah. You don't need to turn. It's not a variable. Maybe yeah. handling. Relaunch. You know, would be more important <laughs> than turning speed, but yeah. Um, so when you look at a kite, you know, let's say you're, you're, you're doing research, you're a consumer, you're doing research, what are those factors that you're looking for? Let's say personally, like what are you, what are you looking for in a wing? Yeah, for yeah. Your riding style? And yeah, and, and for those people even not familiar with kiting, I would say, you know, some differences, you know, right from the get-go with wings. You get wings that are very lifty and grunty. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to, you know, pull and go, so to speak. As yeah, kind of like this guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the unit. Um, you know, they're going to they're gonna create a lot of lift. They're going to get you up on foil very quickly without a lot of board speed. They'll yeah. just maybe be at a standstill. And if you're powered, and go. you're up. And you're just, <laughs> Which that's so true on this. You're, yeah. you're up and off. <laughs> um, and then on, on the flip side of that, you know, there's wings that want to pull forward and create forward momentum yeah. um, rather than pulling up or downwind. Uh, they want to slide forward um, and, and create more apparent wind and board speed. And those tend not to get up on foil you know, quite as easily. It takes a little bit, a couple up. more pumps to build the speed, the lift. Um, but then once you begin to move and go faster, you know, you're really compounding the wind through the wing, creating that yeah. apparent wind, we call it. Yeah. Um, in, in creating more power out of board speed and forward momentum. So that compounds and, and quickly becomes, you know, more powerful or sure. whatever you want to call Is it. Is that a misuse? More speedy. Yeah. It's hard to say power because there's yeah. so many different directions the power can send you. Got it. And they all have their own sensations. They all have their own benefits and drawbacks. Yeah. Um, you know, with a grunty, lifty wing, one thing you get, uh, like we talked about, is, is very pull and go, easy up yeah, on foil, easy to go. Yeah. immediate, you know, not a lot of technique needed. You know, Maybe not the best up on, on the low end, yeah. you know, they tend to be a little easier to get up on foil mm -hmm. because you can really just pull up on them, mm -hmm. you know, like a pull up bar. Uh, whereas those more forward pulling wings, you know, you put it above your head and do this and you're just yeah. going to flap the wing. You want to build that speed more. So, so it's it a slightly a different technique. Uh, maybe a bit more technical, more more of a intermediate plus kind of riding yeah. style. But then um, you're going to jam up wind better. On the low end. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, you're, you're going to create more board speed and, and apparent wind off of that. They, those forward pulling wings do tend to go upwind a little better mm -hmm. uh, because they're not dragging you downwind, yeah, if that makes right, sense. Right, kind of like sure. kites, right? You get yeah. those kites that are just pull like a truck, Big, yep, but yep. then you really got to force them to drag them upwind. Yep. Uh, same kind of idea. Um, and then also, you know, those forward pulling wings tend to have more range yeah. on the top yeah. end. So you can really yep. ride them really overpowered. Yep. Uh, whereas, you know, the real grunty wings, they're very punchy and they're wanting to pull yeah. you downwind you gotta, you or, gotta, or yeah. lift you off your feet sometimes, you yes. know, if you're really riding in powered conditions. Yep. Whereas the ones that want to slide forward rather than yanking you downwind or, or lift you off your feet, they just want to create more speed. Sure. So as long as your foil can handle that, yep. then you're uh, okay. Then you're okay, which is, you know, you see people quickly dropping their foil size. All right, Hooker, what are you doing? Dude, I'm putting on a smaller foil. Why? You know, so I can get a little like, Wet, well, pow, kabam, and then just pull into the pit, get so pitted. In, in a wing like yeah. a slick SLS, uh, a Glide Alula, or a North yeah. Mode, those very quick, fast sure. wings, 
you can really drop your foil size I because understand that now, yeah. as soon as you get them moving, you know, they just compound speed so fast that the next thing becomes, you know, controlling that speed so Got you're not it. getting overlifted. Um, I'm learning. It's also a benefit, <laughs> you know, you don't always need to go Mach 10, yeah. but having a smaller foil that's faster uh, is also going to be a smaller footprint, smaller mm -hmm. wingspan. Sure. So now you have a foil that glides really well. You have a foil that's very capable in terms of speed, mm -hmm. but also now very capable in turns. Because, oh, yeah. you know, right. the problem right. with, you know, a high aspect wing and a bigger size, uh, you know, a great low end, great glide, sure. you know, pretty good top end range, but the wingspans get pretty, mm -hmm. uh, pretty, pretty difficult. Pretty cumbersome. You know, in a, yeah. yeah, cumbersome in, the, in a rolling turn, especially, you know, in a powered situation where you're going yeah. fast. You know, they're really not going to want to roll over and, and do a Mach 10 banking turn. Yep. So sizing down, you know, really lets you get the best of all worlds. Yeah. Uh, only, only world you don't get is a real low end in terms sure. of light wind ability on a, on a set, set up like that. But um, as long as you're riding in decent wind, you know, you just size up your white, size up your wing. Yeah. Uh, and that lets, lets you ride that smaller foil. So if we had, uh, you know, the elements or characteristics, we, we talked about grunt, talked about forward drive. Um, how about just handling the wing and like you say, negotiating turns, yeah. is that, is there something in there, you know, are some wings better at entering into a turn and exiting, exiting out of a turn than others? Is that, you know, what are the things that you're looking for there? Something that's going to float and drift a little bit well so you yeah. can go around? Yeah, again, there's a lot of variables there, right? Like you can talk about how wing lofts if you're doing a job. Yeah, that's yeah. How that's, is it going to fall in front of you? Sure. Is it going to just kind of hang out in front of you? Yeah. And a lot of that has to do with the wind speed. Uh, yeah, and, right. And handle the wing, you know. A lot of times, I'm really not just dropping my wing and letting it luff mm -hmm. into a jive, unless I'm just automatically riding a wave and then I'm turning into a jive. Sure, yeah. You know, I'm gonna hang onto the wing through two thirds of the turn and then switch. So the luffing doesn't got it doesn't really play in as much uh, in attack. Um, those forward pulling wings tend to be a lot easier to complete attack, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is because when you're going up into the wind. They don't have as much drag. Sure. So the grunty yeah. wings tend to have a lot more drag through the canopy. Might fight you through that. Yeah, you're gonna have to yeah. fight it and muscle mm -hmm. it through the wind, mm -hmm. um, and it it, help, it decelerates you. Yeah. You know, it's pretty amazing how quickly you decelerate on a wing that has more drag in attack. Yeah. Um, but again, the flip side of that, those grunty wings, if you're Oh, I slowed down. I'm almost about to stall. Sure. And then you grab that wing, you're, <laughs> you're, you're off right. again, you know? Yeah. But uh, as long as you keep, yeah, a little bit of momentum through the turn, you know, give it a couple of pumps on, on those forward pulling wings yeah. and they're off to the races as well. Um, How about, uh, like you're talking about downwind and, and uh, you know, once you, once you bank onto a swell and you're, you're, you know, the ability to flag the wing out and yeah. have it float and not want to tip over and flip around on you. Uh, how do you characterize that? What, what kind of a terminology do you use? Yeah, there? that has more to do with the dihedral shape of the wing. Got it. Um, the more dihedral there is, the more unwieldy it's going to be side to side. Yeah. It also has a lot to do with the handle uh, The design. placement, yeah. And, and if it's sloppy, uh, if, if you can really grab hold of it and, and manhandle the wing. But with a lot of these uh, new hard handles, you, you can, can go you on here, grab huh? the front of the, hand, the yeah. switch in here. And that can give you a little bit more leverage over the wing, a little bit more control. And, and possibly kind of a little more power if you need just, just that. Yeah, you yeah can just quick drop feather it. And, and give it a little yeah. power. Um, definitely makes it easier. Obviously, it makes it easier if you need to quick grab it with two hands. Right. Or right. even if you just want to throw it over your head a lot of times, I'll do that <laughs> right here. Throw it over my head, and this is kind of resting on my shoulder at the back of my head. Yeah, as you're going down the line. Going straight down the yeah. yeah. And that keeps it from falling in front of me and tripping me up. Yeah. Uh, also lets me see what I'm doing, you know, rather than the big yeah. wing in front of me while I'm trying to navigate a wave face. Sure. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of variables in winging, and uh, you know, some of it's just a personal preference too. Honestly, yep. you know, some people really swear by this wing or that wing. Sure. And you know, and we do that, that with kites too. That's right? that's for that you. That's, it's not for yeah, me. Yeah, you know? for sure. And uh, you know, that's that's great as well. And and. You know, having a discussion with somebody that really knows their stuff, like our guys yep. here at the shop. Yep. You know, you can say, "Hey, Tucker, I've been on, you know, this and that, and I really How like this. this. I didn't like that. Yeah. You know, and I'm considering this. What do you think?" And yeah. it could be like, "Yeah, that sounds like a good choice." Or, "Ooh, no, no, that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot like the one you don't like." Right. Yeah. Um, and and there is a lot of uh, a lot of variants in wings now, which is great. Mm -hmm. Lots of good flavors to choose from. Yeah. Um, maybe that black licorice isn't for everybody, man, but you know, it's not either. Gotta have it. <laughs> gotta so it's nice to have some flavors other than vanilla. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. two, three years ago, it's kind of like everything is just so middle of the yeah. road. Yeah, we didn't know. Um, yep. You know, everything was just kind of a do it all, jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. Is our first 
wing surfing wing demo here from Duotone. Medium power delivery, it kind of pulls forward, it kind of has a little ground, you know, and really no polarizing aspects of yeah. the wing. Um, so it's, you know, just kind of good for sort of everything, not great at anything. Um, so seeing some of those, uh, yeah, polarizing models yeah. in the industry is really cool. Uh, so and just to touch on those real quick, yeah. unit, very grunty. Uh, yeah. You talk about uh, sling wing, very grunty. Mm -hmm. uh, something like a slick SLS, something like uh, a North Mode, mm -hmm. something like uh, Ocean Rodeo, Glide Alula, very forward pulling, quick yeah. wings, fast wings. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of everything else kind of falls somewhere in between that spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, but it is good to know you know, what kind of wing you like, and, and it changes too. You know, I tend to really like those faster, forward pulling, fast, speedy wings. Sure. Uh, but there's a lot of situations, you know, where I'll grab a unit or I'll grab a sling wing and have a lot of fun on that. Light wind days, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah light wind, it just makes yeah. it easy to pull and go sometimes. And if you, you aren't really, you know, riding for a lot of speed, you know, that can still be a consideration. Yeah. Light wind is efficiency and, and speed, because once you get moving, you can really amplify that. But um, you know, maybe I'm testing a bigger board and foil. Sure. Where, who cares if the wing can go Mach 10? Yeah. The board and foil only go Mach 3. Sure. You know, so <laughs> right. yes. I don't need that. So yeah. I'll take the easy up and go. Uh, and, and that is, you know, sometimes how it ends up playing out yeah. is, you know, your wing complements your board and foil. Yep. Um, you yeah. Know, you those, kinda, those kinda lower kinda aspect, those bigger, uh, bigger boards and foils, you know really like that easy up and go mm. um, you know the speedier ones you know sometimes the problem can be in a fast foil is you have maybe a grunty wing and it gets you right up on foil but then you sure. immediately max out yeah you know, right. it's like and you just I'm either feel overpowered drag. and uncomfortable mm. on the wing and the foil just wants to keep going faster or the foil wants to go faster and the wing has too much drag it sure, won't go faster um, so those are some of the things to consider yeah and there's a, there's a lot there and honestly, I don't think there's a clear answer for everybody. Yeah. You know, it's not like A yeah. plus B equals C. Sure. It's uh, more variables than that. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, tell me what your favorite color is. What what's your favorite food? Sure. You know, what kind of music do you like? Yep. And hey, maybe you like this movie. Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, but yeah, I can right. make a, I can try to make you a can good get guess. You there. Yeah. So to summarize, if we were talking again, coming from the kite world, I know there's some things that I'm going to be looking for in a kite. I, I want to know about the low end power, the upwind yep. ability, the jumping, the relaunch. Totally. I'm sure yeah. there's a few other things that I kind of have in there. How does that quickly translate to wing? We just, yeah. just in a few in a few points. Yeah, yeah. And the people that have been doing this a while, have ridden a lot of different wings, they'll kind of have an idea of some models they like or like yeah. interfaces they like, and, and it's pretty easy to hone that in. For a new rider, I'd say, you know, some things you can look at are the interface of the wing yeah so is it handle is it boom is it mm. loops is it whatever yeah electromagnets i don't know sure. that coming, man. <laughs> you um, just spark something there yeah electromagnets yeah. <laughs> um so you know picking something that's appealing to you you know something that makes sense yeah um in, in your mentality and, and where you want to go i think having an idea of what kind of riding you might want to do ultimately sure you know is yeah. Are the waves really appealing to you? Yeah. Or are you in the middle of Kansas where you're never going to see a wave unless you go on a vacation? Sure. Yeah. You know, waves probably aren't going to be that appealing to you if you live in Kansas. Yeah, yeah. It's just how it is. Um, sure. So you know, knowing if you're going to want to get into freestyle racing, yeah. waves, you know, free riding is a bit of everything. So sure. you, know, you can usually do almost any all freestyle or free ride on almost anything, but. Um, knowing where you want to potentially go can, can inform some of those decisions as yep. well. And uh, also just what kind of wind, ra wind range you want and what kind of winds you're going to be flying in realistically. Yeah. You know? If you're in Maui, maybe you don't <laughs> care that much about the latest and greatest in 8-meter wings. Sure. Um, and you know, if you're somewhere else, in Southern California, you know, this gets a lot of You want to know all wind. about that, yeah. You want to know all about those yeah. latest and greatest in light wings and you're going to you know, be a lot more considerate of uh, the low end. Yep. Uh, than you know maybe it's range in the high end or you know it, it's performance in overhead swell or something For sure. right? like um, and knowing some of those variables is, is definitely important and uh, also you know just considering the gear you're riding so it's a bit more complex I feel like you know because kiting I feel like is an easy translation we know yeah. the recipe we can say yep based on X Y and Z I can pick out a kite because I, I know what I like in a kite on a wing it seems like especially for the beginner it's it's a little more um, 
maybe there's more variables, let's say. And so that's yeah. where, you know, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. If you've made it this far in the video, pick up the phone or, or you know, shoot yeah, it. We just confused. You know, we just we rambled some brain. Brain. I know, Sorry, no. guys. But yeah. we, I'm just trying to relate that. You know, I know what I'm looking for in a kite. How do I do that in a wing? Because I'm a new, uh, I'm new on winging too. So I'm kind of running through those processes in my own mind. And I'm thinking, well, you know, how do I, how do I translate that? And so bottom line, if you have questions, give us a shout. You know, we're always here to help. We're always happy to help with that. Um, and uh, Tucker, you want to, do you want to lead us out here? Yeah. Yeah. We're also overcomplicating things. We are right? overcomplicating. We're talking, <laughs> we're talking like these increment minute details of things that, that really only matter to very picky people or sure. very advanced level riders that mm -hmm. are looking for very peak level performance in certain areas. You know, for new riders, honestly, you can grab about anything. As long as it's the right, right size, size. Yeah. it's going to work. Yep. You know, are there advantages to some wings over another? Absolutely. Yeah, we can sure. definitely help you pick the right one there. We definitely, you know, focus on beginner ease of use, mm -hmm. uh, just ease of entry into the sport, make your life good, make the most of the equipment you have yeah. without having to buy five wings. Right. You know, so that can be a real uh, factor as well. Um, but the reality is, you know, they're, they're all pretty middle of the road in terms of comparison even to kiteboarding. Yeah. You know, where, where in kites, you know, you can certainly make a bad choice. Sure you can. Uh, into a, yeah. a kite that's just not right for a beginner uh, or, or maybe yeah. be outright dangerous sure. know, without the right level of experience. With winging, it's really not like that. Not as complicated. Um, yeah, it's not as complicated. You know, there's definitely benefits to every choice. Uh, there's also drawbacks and we can help, uh, help anybody understand that and help them make the right choice. Another easy button answer is just to look at our packages. Those sure. are pre-built yep. for new riders. Right, right. They're great price. They're great gear. It's gonna, yeah. you know, be exactly what you need as as a new rider. I hope we, I hope we didn't veer <laughs> off too too far off of our main subject here. But again, uh, Tucker, thanks for helping to explain some of this. And I, I, as I'm talking with you, I'm I'm always learning because you have a wealth of information. And so. Um, I may need to pick up the phone and have some follow-up questions for you. <laughs> but yeah. guys, if We're here you answer, have... answer any questions for anybody, even AJ. All day, all day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for joining us. This has been Tucker and Aaron at Matt Kite. If you have any more questions about wing and sizing up the wing and the difference between, you know, kite uh, characteristics and wing characteristics and how you pick out the, the right wing for you, pick up the phone, give us a call. We're always happy to help. And uh, until then, we hope to see you on the water. <laughs>